Hey John here, video day and I put on my crisp white shirt and I want to talk about just generally some background about how I grew a blogging business from zero to seven figures. Now that's not seven figures a month, that's seven figures in terms of uh, current market value of all my websites. So I, I run uh, income reports for most of my niche sites, uh, fatsucksblog.com and I had an email from a reader recently who, who asked me to cover this topic. I'll show you the email shortly. But I remember, you know, when starting out that uh, it was frustrating. I, I did a lot of work for nothing for a long time. Uh, I, I know you, you read sites like Fatstacks and it looks easy and there's lots of revenue and sites get lots of traffic, but it wasn't always like that. In fact, it, it took well over a year before I made a nickel doing this and that was already with a lot of experience uh, doing blogging for uh, a brick and mortar business that I used to be involved in and so I actually knew what I was doing when I launched niche sites and even then it took well over a year before anything really started to happen but I didn't I didn't quit things worked out pretty well uh, I'm not a tech gazillionaire by any stretch but uh, I am definitely fortunate doing something I like and able to make a living doing it. So a reader asked a question, a fast facts reader emailed me and said, uh, well, you can read it there. The kind of stuff I really need to know is how you got to this level, how you started, what it took to build the momentum, how much time per week put in it, sacrifices made, how many articles were written versus bought, stuff like that would be helpful. So that was the impetus for this post. So basically I thought about, well, what's the best way to present this? And I think the best approach, and, and this was received favorably, is kind of in a, in a timeline set out in chunks, sort of phases as I went along. So basically I, I kicked off in uh, 2008 was really when I first got started. And that was when I was uh, practicing law, I had a brick and mortar business, uh, professional business, service business, and uh, we needed uh, a website, and so we got one, and uh, the outfit, which I, I got very lucky choosing a very good website company to uh, build us a site. I didn't build, I didn't, knew nothing about this stuff, and uh, they had a really early version of CMS, which is essentially like WordPress built in, and they said blog, write about whatever your prospective clients would like to read about and that'll help you get clients. And they were right because this, this is way back. I mean, well, Google was definitely well established, but SEO, those are still pretty early days. And, uh, there, it was like a vacuum. There was, there was nothing there. So I was able to rank a lot of content pretty quickly without really knowing anything about SEO, except that writing articles in a blog was a good idea. So, but, uh, once the traffic started coming in and getting some new clients, uh, I, I was encouraged by that and started reading more about SEO. And well, once you go down the SEO rabbit hole, well, then you learn about niche sites and affiliate marketing and display ads and all the rest of it that has now become uh, my business. So uh, the first site, uh, Crash and Burn, and I put a lot of time into that site, put a lot of effort into that site. I think I got it to 50 or 70 articles or all that, and it just it just didn't go anywhere. And, you know, I, I never like to tell anyone, you know, I get asked a lot, you know, should I should I keep working on a site or should I just quit and try something else? And, and that's really an impossible question to answer because, I mean, I hate to say, well, I think you should quit. And then it turns out, you know, they don't quit and they carry on with it and it turns into a big success. And imagine if they had followed my advice, uh, I'd feel terrible about it. Or vice versa. Oh, well, keep at it, keep at it, should work. And, you know, five years later, it's still not going anywhere. Again, I feel bad. So that's a question that uh, I really don't like fielding, but I was presented with it for myself. And I made a decision to bail and I started a second niche, uh, niche site. And, and that was a decent success. It took a few years for it to grow, but uh, it, it worked out. And I still have that site. And in fact, it's site number two in the income report. So you can you can check those out and you can see how it's done. It's it's very stable. It's it's plateaued. It's not growing really. It's not a large site. It serves a very, very small audience. And then I started a third site. It was basically a strict affiliate site. Uh, the content was actually very good. Uh, it was about a lot of stuff that I was familiar with. It was a topic I was familiar with. And I was able to grow that to a decent monthly revenue uh, that that too took time, but uh, that was a, a good stable earner as well uh, until Google Penguin came around and, and that really knocked it out. Same with the fourth site, as you can see there, which was affiliate site. The content wasn't so good, but it was it was good enough, and, and that was also a decent affiliate earner and uh, also got whacked by Penguin. So 
uh, at the bottom here, I tell you, uh, Google Penguin slaughtered two new sites in April 2012. Well, th those were essentially my only two new sites except for that, that second one. Now, that second one didn't get whacked because I didn't do any link building. Now, I, I, the, the ones that got hit by Google Penguin, I did a lot of link building. I mean, that's what you did for SEO. Uh, but for, for some reason, I didn't do it for the second new site. It, was, it wasn't earning much back then. And I didn't really think that building links was, was worth the time because it just really wouldn't help it so much. But uh, fortunately, then after Go uh, after Penguin, that second site took off. So that was uh, fortuitous for me. So that was a, a bit of luck for sure. And uh, I can't deny the fact that I've had some luck along the way here. So uh, that brought us to 2012. That was about four years. I was working full time for a lot of that time, right? So I went full time in uh, early 2012, just before Google Penguin, of course, uh, as, as bad luck would have it. So Penguin came along and that changed SEO forever. Uh, anybody who's been around since then knows that. So it was time for what I call the great transition. And I was done with SEO. I didn't really know how to approach SEO without building all the links. And so I started, uh, well, it turned out that Facebook was, was taken off big time. Facebook for, for publishers, that is, with, with viral pages and posts. And the reach was insane. And I jumped in on that and, and managed to do uh, pretty good with that. And what was nice about that is is it was fast. Uh, it was very fortunate. I, I would consider this another good bit of luck uh, switching over to Facebook. Uh, w one of my regrets, actually, is not leveraging Facebook more during this time because from a probably like 2011, 2012 to about 2015, 16, Facebook was phenomenal. Like it was just the, the reach was incredible. You could post anything moderately interesting and you could get a lot of traffic. So, so th that was really good. And I ran with that for about two years. Well, I'd say to 2014, yeah, like about two years, 2012 to uh, 2014. And uh, what, what I did notice, though, was that Facebook, I started seeing a little bit of a drop in reach. And, and that concerned me because it was, uh, I thought, well, if we're, if we're dropping in reach a little bit now, where is that going? Uh, Facebook sold another year or two before they would really drop the hammer, but that concerned me. So what I decided to do was I went back to SEO, but I, I didn't do the link building thing. I decided to launch a site and really grow, build it into something really big and stick with it and try to just write, publish really good content. And that's what I did. So I, I launched it in early 2014. It's uh, the, the first site in my income reports. I still have it. I still work on it daily. It's my largest site. It's my largest revenue source by far. And uh, I started just publishing a lot of content, all of it that I wrote. And here where is where uh, a, a good chunk of luck came in. Uh, and that was in the form of what's called ad arbitrage. And Facebook traffic was ridiculously cheap then. I, I was still getting a lot. I, I launched a, a Facebook page for this site as well. And uh, the traffic was really, really good. It was a visual niche. So the traffic was great. And then I started boosting posts and doing some Facebook ads. And it was super cheap. And I was able to drive a lot of traffic to the site for, for pennies. And the display ads profited, uh, I earned more than, than what it was costing me. So I did ad arbitrage with this for a couple of years. And that worked out really, really well. And I, I, I do admit that that was a, a good bit of luck. I uh, just happened to choose a niche where that worked in. So I did that. But ultimately, Facebook ads uh, went up in price. And the ARB stopped working. But by then, the site had grown to uh, have a lot of content, long form content, and the SEO was happening, it was growing. And so I transitioned from Facebook focus and especially Facebook ads, and went into uh, SEO. And that's what I've done ever since. So th this would have been around 2016, where the ad arbitrage pretty much stopped working. Uh, there's still people who do that ad arbitrage, it's a lot harder now, but it's totally doable, it's possible, you really, it's, it's a lot of work. Uh, uh, it's not easy. It sounds easy, but it's not. It's a lot of work. Very few campaigns will work. If they do work, of course, you want to scale them and you want to make as much as you humanly can off those. And the ones that don't work, well, you lose money and you hope the winners make up for that. Anyways, I uh, was still doing lots of content. I did uh, outsource. I started outsourcing once the ad was working pretty good. I still wrote my own. And I was off to the races with just old school SEO, no link building. And, but I didn't do a whole lot of really good keyword 
research either. That that came a little bit later, but I was getting quite a bit of SEO traffic, so I was pretty happy about that. So in terms of the specifics during this time, this is 2014 to present, uh, I did launch Fat Stacks in 2015. And during this time, uh, 2016, I also bought another site for 10,000 bucks. It, it had no profit. It did have some rev revenue, but the server costs ate it up. It was pretty high traffic, actually. It was a terrible niche, though, in terms of ad revenue, just deplorable. I thought I could make it earn more, but I couldn't. So uh, it turned out that site, I've, I've turned that site into a decent money maker. It's not terrific, but it's decent, and I at least have paid for my 10,000 bucks and then some. I uh, decided to lease an office in 2016. I uh, uh, used to work at home, which was great, but it was time to get out. And uh, then 2017, uh, by this point, my I was still focusing on that, that biggest site, which is still my biggest site. And uh, I was starting to really work on my keyword research. I was pretty much 100% SEO at this point. Facebook was pretty much toast. Uh, it wasn't working at all. And so I was focused on long tail keywords, low competition, a lot of content. Lo and behold, the sucker gets de-indexed by Google in 2017. Uh, I still remember that. I was toward the end. It was uh, actually right about early December like today as I make this video. And uh, But fortunately, fortunately, it was because, it, yeah, and this sounds weird to say fortunately, but it was because uh, I had a malware attack on the site. And I knew something was up, but I couldn't really, I, I didn't know for sure, but something just wasn't right with it. And... I was with a different hosting company at the time and they weren't doing anything for me. They weren't helping out at all. I couldn't figure it out. I'm not a, I'm not a tech person. I'm not into website security. So I, um, I believe I hired security to investigate, diagnose, and fix it. And that they did. They got rid of it, which was amazing. And I resubmitted it to Google and it was re-indexed very quickly, actually. My, I was surprised. I thought the re-indexing would take months. It took a couple of days once I had resubmitted it. It had been de-indexed, de I think, about four to six weeks uh, just while I was investigating and trying to get it cleaned up. So that was a pretty scary moment. Uh, 2018, I launched a few more sites. I uh, just got a handful of sites. In fact, if you go to the income reports on Fat Sacks, it's, uh, it's I have seven new sites that I discussed there. So some of those were launched in 2018. In 2019, I launched first e-commerce product with one of my niche sites. That's in fact very recent to now. So that's a, that's a timeline of the uh, evolution of a whole bunch of niche sites that I've grown. Some are small still, and they're not with no immediate plans to uh, really grow them. Others I'm working pretty hard on and have some pretty good plans for them in 2020 and beyond. So, you know, the thing is with this business is sometimes you launch a site uh, with good intentions, grand plans, and it just doesn't work. And that's okay. I have launched a lot more sites that haven't worked out than I have that have worked out. And that's a pretty important piece of information because especially when you're starting out, uh, it's it's hard to accept that what you've done and you perhaps put months or even a year into and it doesn't work, that's frustrating. And it is frustrating because I've been there. And I still happen to launch sites where, for whatever reason, just it's a bad idea, but you don't know until you start and it's just not going anywhere and at some point you got thrown in the towel. So the other part of the reader's question was about how much time I work. and. When I first went full-time back in 2012, I, p I put in quite a bit of time, uh, you could, about 40 to 55 hours, we could say on average, a little bit in between that. Uh, these days, I would say it's uh, 35 to 40 hours per week. So yeah, it's still it's still a full-time gig for me because I'm growing the business. Um, I'm working on additional sites. Uh, I put a lot of time into fat stacks, and I would say I would put 20 hours per week into fat stacks, primarily because I enjoy it. I look forward to it. It's the last uh, site I work on quite a few days. And if it weren't for Fat Stacks, which is all me, I, I do most of the writing. I, I do these videos. I do the podcasts. It's, it's a lot of time-consuming work. I could probably whittle my work week down to 20 hours per week if it was just restricted to managing niche sites. And there's an important point there, and that is managing niche sites, especially when you have some revenue coming and you can outsource a lot of the work. 
it really can be, I don't want to say 100% passive type business, but it can be a business that is not going to consume your entire life. And that's really cool because it gives you options, right? One of the options I choose to do with my extra time is to run fat sex because I enjoy doing it. It is a, a lucrative website, but I, I enjoy it. It's fun. I mean, a lot of people uh, enjoy obviously writing and talking about this stuff. So, um, but hey, if you prefer to just put in your 20 and call it a week, uh, niche sites can do that for you. Assuming you can outsource most of the work and you, your role is basically supervisory at that point. Now, if I were starting over, what would I do looking back over the 10 years? Yeah, I still can't believe it's been 10 years. That's amazing. Uh, uh, first is, uh, I'm, you know, talk about Google Penguin back in, in April 2012 when that happened. I remember about three months before that, I think it was January or February, I had some website broker uh, who I, I knew nothing about selling sites. And they contacted me out of the blue and they wanted, they wanted to represent, they thought, I think it was one of my niche sites could sell for six figures and I was just like wow that's amazing but I thought well if it could sell for six figures now imagine what it could sell for in uh, five years <laughs> which was obviously a huge mistake right uh, because within three months the site was worthless so I should have done it but hey, hindsight's twenty twenty. Uh, the other thing uh, I would do is quality. Uh, I have taken shortcuts over the years, especially with some of the shortcut SEO tactics that uh, used to work and don't work anymore before 2012. I have published content that is not as good as it should have been. And had I focused more and more on quality from day one, I'd probably be a, be a lot further ahead. Uh, I've already alluded to I wouldn't do any link building. Um, it, it's hard to say that I wouldn't, you know, I mean, before Penguin, I mean, it, link building was ridiculously effective. And I don't know if I would have grew those sites as quickly into levels that I did, uh, the ones I got hammered by Penguin, had I not done link building. So it's all well and good to say, well, you know, I shouldn't have done link building. But at the same time, they probably wouldn't have gone anywhere had I not. Because, I mean, you're dealing with other sites that were doing tons of link building. Of course, in the long run, uh, it would have been great, right, if, I, if those sites were totally no link building involved, they probably would have done really well after Penguin. So, I mean, you know, that's just the way it goes. Uh, I would uh, also continue to focus on uh, users, um, which kind of, you know, I used to do a lot of affiliate content, right? Reviews and, and anything I wrote would have to have some sort of affiliate promotion angle to it. And that really gets boring. I don't think it makes for a good comprehensive site. And so these days I really focus on more informational content. I do of course do some affiliate content, but I like a lot of content that is, doesn't have an affiliate link. It's just informational. I, I, I monetize with display ads and I use a lot of display ads across my sites. And, and, and the last thing that I would change, I really would have done a lot more on Facebook when Facebook reach was high. That, that was one of those traffic gifts that are just, I mean, I don't know if we'll ever see the likes of that again. I suspect we probably will. But, I mean, that was just one of those, it's kind of like the perfect storm of, of traffic for three or four years. I mean, some, some companies were, were literally getting 50 million visitors a month from Facebook. I mean, it was just a tsunami. It was incredible. And uh, I, I, I didn't do as, as much as I definitely could have. Lessons learned. Uh, this it takes a lot of hard work. I mean, it's been 10 years of hard work. Uh, fortunately, it's work I like, so it doesn't seem like work. If you don't like this stuff, there's probably something easier you could do, and I'm not kidding about that. And it does take time. Uh, you, you know, you, you can't rush Google. You, you, can, you can try to speed it up a little bit, but ranking for anything takes time. Building up social media following takes time. Working on any sort of conversion for if you're selling products, it all takes time. The stuff takes time, it takes testing, you gotta be patient. Uh, I will also admit I've been lucky over the years and with the ad arbitrage, uh, with the Facebook traffic, those are two instances of some pretty decent luck. Uh, setbacks are inevitable. Just in November 2019, my largest site got dinged with a 15% traffic reduction for, from an update. I have no idea why. Uh, it's a core update. Google doesn't give any specifics. And uh, I guess as updates go, 15% not a huge amount. So I, I can consider myself lucky and carry on and uh, hope for the best, I suppose. And uh, overall, lesson learned is quality is paramount. When I look at anything that's really done well, especially like content-wise and ranking and, and revenue, uh, good quality content 
has outperformed by far and I uh, wish I had focused more and more of it 100% of the time. But I've done enough of it that I've managed to make things work out okay. That's a quick jaunt through 10 years of starting a blogging slash niche site business and growing it to what it is today. Now, I'm going to make it very clear uh, where I'm at today is nothing compared to a lot of other sites. Uh, I just happen to talk about this stuff and what I'm doing. Uh, when I was starting out, uh, my numbers would have seemed really high, but people are doing way bigger numbers. I am I'm certainly not a, a top tier publisher by any stretch, but uh, just been fortunate enough to be able to, to string together a half decent living doing this. Thanks for watching.